You're listening to international investment advisor Doug Goldstein on the Goldstein on Gelt Show, the financial show where we'll talk about how you can make the most of your money. With all the confusing financial chatter bombarding you each and every day, Goldstein on Gelt will give you the practical information you want and need about living a financially stable life. Here's your host, money maven Doug Goldstein. Okay, we are back. We are talking to Ms. Sal Tzvi, who is the co-founder of Genio, which is probably how you know her if you heard her on the Goldstein on Gelt show previously. In fact, if you missed that interview, be sure to listen to it at goldsteinongelt.com. It was fascinating, and Genio is a fabulous company. In fact, I've already been using their product now for a few months. But today we are talking about something completely different with Saul, about her music business. Although she has held several top managerial positions at Microsoft, both in Israel and the U.S., she's written three professional books. She is also a fabulous musician and singer, and she is coming out with a new album, which in English would be called Coming From There, and in Hebrew it's called Megia Misham. Saul, it's a pleasure to have you back. Thank you so much, Doug. So I know a lot about your high-tech background. Can you tell me a little bit about your music background? Actually, I uh, start, uh, started to write when I was really a little girl, uh, playing with my guitar at home. Um, and being an artist is, in a way, the way I used to define myself. So music was something that was obvious for me, and writing was something that was a bit obvious. And I think that, uh, you know, when after the Army, uh, finished uh, the two years in the Army, and then I, I was looking for new challenges. So I put the music aside, and that it was really a huge part of my life, and I decided to do something else that will that I'll feel the challenge or I'll feel that, you know, I can do something else. And this is how I came to the high-tech industry when the music was the something that was always part of who I am or the way I defined it myself. Um, so I believe that at some point when you, you, you're growing up, you know, you, you figure out that it's, it's just if, if you keep things in your mind and you don't accomplish them, so it's just in your mind. And you have to go through and, you know, define your dreams and go and make them come true. And this is, this is where I'm at the moment. That's great. So you had a practical bend, which was when you came out of the army to, to, to get a, a job, which turned out okay in high tech, but you also kept the, uh, the music going. This is not your first album, right? No, no, it is my first album because uh, music, I, I used to, to do, uh, you know, shows here and there in Tel Aviv and in bars and, and <laughs> places like that. But at some point, I, w I really wanted to focus on, on my high tech career. So in, in a sense, this is why I wrote three books, because that was my creativity uh, came to a different place. So I started writing a lot of articles, defining psychology and technology all together, and uh, took all my writing capabilities into a different angle. And now I think I grew up, and I think I know how to do them both. All right, so tell me, the, the, uh, the new album called Magia Misham, what type of music is it? Uh, to, to, yeah, it's, it's uh, hard to define this, but this music, but I would say that it's uh, an Israeli folk music. Um, it's not really a rock, it's all acoustic band, and it's something that, uh, when I, my influence of music was, of course, international music, but I was really influenced from the local music that happened here in Israel, and I guess that uh, you can feel the roots of uh, the influence of all the Israeli singers in my music today. So the, the music industry today in Israel, which is the target, the, the album is, a, is in Hebrew, although the music is fabulous. I've had a, a pre-listen, so even those who are not Hebrew speakers could enjoy it. What's the music industry like, and what's the market like in Israel now? Uh, I think the music industry in general, worldwide, uh, went through a big evolution. Um, the evolution uh, happened in four angles, so for all the four major players in the industry, uh, the, the recording labels, uh, and, you know, once an artist had to go to recording label to fund their album or their music, and nowadays, like, uh, just not, not just like the Beatles used to make music, um, uh, today you have your home studios, it's really accessible um, and not so expensive to buy your own uh, recording 
devices and all the equipments that you need in order to, to record your own music. So this is one thing to change. The other thing is that, of course, everyone with guitar nowadays can, you know, de define themselves as an artist or start singing. So there's a lot of music out there. Um, and, of course, the way we... The, the way the music is accessible to us, the audience, uh, yeah, changed. Uh, we used to have like several international radio stations and several TV shows that you know that like MTV, for example, you wanted to watch a video clip, you used to go to MTV and wait, uh, you know, until you get the, the video clip that you like. Right. Nowadays, you can go to YouTube and, you know, the, decide when uh, and what you want to see and what. So, mm-hmm. Certainly, many changes. In uh, the, uh, in fact, now that you mention YouTube, I will mention as well that we are talking to Saul Sfi, who is the co-founder of Genio. She was previously on the Goldstein on Gelt show, and you can listen to that interview at goldsteinongelt.com. But you can also see it on YouTube. If you just YouTube Goldstein on Gelt, you'll see her smiling face there. Saul, tell me something. The the because this is a business show, I'd like to focus more on the business side, not mm -hmm. it, not to the detriment of the music, but I'd like to focus on how you plan to market this CD compared to what other people are doing now. This is this is a great question, Doug, because uh, I think in a way I'm taking my entrepreneur capabilities or way of thinking also to my music uh, my music. I wouldn't say career yet, but. Uh, to, my, to, to the music things that uh, I'm doing around this industry. So usually when you will talk to artists, you'll see that they're making their own music, they prepare the product, and they actually don't care about it in a sense of they don't do a lot with you know, the, the delivering the product to the audience. Uh, and they count on the, distri the distribution companies and the PR company agencies, etc., and I think the way I, uh, I, the, my approach to, to my album was a bit different from, from everyone else in the way that the album was sold already for uh, many thousands of copies, even before it launched. The launching is going to be just in January. So, uh, so I, I, it's, it's like you're creating, you know, you're making this baby that's called your album, but you cannot say this baby going to grow by itself, you still need to, t you know, to take him hand by hand and make sure it will get to the right audience and you will build the community around your music. So, so how, did, how did you pre-sell thousands of copies? Uh, I just uh, offer, offer my album even before I had it in hands <laughs> to, to a lot of comp high tech companies uh, and that bought the album for their uh, employees. Uh, and this way, and uh, the employees could be, uh, you know, they have the, the, the chance to, to listen to this music and come and later on come to my music shows. Uh, so I actually closed a lot of, you know, this kind of deals uh, with uh, many high tech companies. That's impressive. The, uh, the CD is actually being issued as a physical CD, which is still very common these days, but I get the feeling that we're moving away from that model as people are downloading more music and simply buying the MP3s. How did you choose to do a, a, a real physical CD as opposed to something else? Uh, I have two, two answers for this question, and it's not an easy one. Um, because uh, this album is actually, it's not a normal album in a sense of a song by song album. It's an album that, it's a conceptual album that uh, have a story uh, that has been written and it's part of the, of the, of the, of the music. Uh, but, so this is one, the, this is the easier answer saying, you know, I have at least an excuse because it's in a way, it's a little bit, it's, it's also have a little book inside of it that uh, have a story between the songs. Very nice. Um, so, the, yeah, so this is a good ex excuse, though, because this you can do online as well. I think that uh, when you have a dream as, as a kid, uh, you know, to see your book in a shelf in, in the stores, uh, it's an emotional decision that uh, might not be economical all the time, you know, but sometimes you do something because of uh, different reasons. And uh, I think to, to, hold it, to hold something in your hands, there's still people that, uh, can, that can respect the product as it is. And I think that in a way, because everything becomes online and, it's, uh, and, and digital, you need to have some kind of added value. If you want to have a physical product, you need to put into this product some added value 
that you won't get uh, on the online version. So I would say that it's a lot of uh, emotional decisions behind it, uh, and and as as a dream to have an album, of course, uh, part of it was to be able to hold something that it's on the air. Music is something that you listen; it's spiritual in a way, and, and suddenly you can hold it in your hand and, and see it as a product. I see. With all of the downloading that's going on, so much music being bought online, and not only that, but so much music being ripped off CDs and then put onto YouTube, certainly there are many, many people who never even consider buying buying music. They simply download whatever they want from any of a number of sites. Being that this is prevalent, how do you see the music industry developing, let's say, over, let's say over the next five, ten years? Will it still be a big business, or is it going to shrink because people are just sharing music? Uh, this is the one million dollar question because there's the two sides of this of this angle. Because in one hand, uh, at least in Israel, the audience expect to get music even for free, not even buying it. Uh, and Apple did a great thing by enable the iTunes, and so you can uh, actually uh, buy even one song and not the entire album. Uh, so in one hand, it uh, encouraged people to consume or to buy more songs. Uh, and albums if uh, we had a, a huge pirate issues in uh, uh, just a decade before. So in one hand is a good thing. The other thing that you can see that a lot of physical stores are, are just gone. Uh, especially in Israel, there's not a lot of physical stores that you can go and actually buy a physical CD. Um, so, so, yeah, you can see that the artists uh, really get hurt. Uh, economical uh, f f because of it, in one hand. The other hand is that the word become international. So let's say that my audience is, uh, let's say that I was, uh, you know, singing in English and the audience was a uh, worldwide audience, uh, so I could sell my music even to people that live in uh, New York and in other places around the world uh, really easily because they don't have the limitation of uh, geographical Places. So this it's have you know two two sides of the same thing. Uh, in Israel, the problem I think is 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 dramatic, uh, just because you see that a lot of recording studios just losing money. The artist okay. is getting poor, uh, more poor every day, uh, and uh, yeah, it's it's a huge there's a huge um, revolutions that happen right now, and I don't think that someone really knows where it, where it's going to land and what's going to really happen in order to keep the balance of making the artist still, uh, you know, making a uh, living and um, be able to sell the music. Okay, I guess we will see that one play out. We are talking to Saul Tzvi, who has previously been on the show in her capacity as the co-founder of Genio, a really cool uh, application for your computer that makes you a personalized newspaper. But today we've been talking about her album called Magia Misham, which is going to be released when and how can people order it? Uh, the the first single is going to be released to the, to the radio pretty soon in the middle of November, and the album launching going to be in January. Uh, but uh, uh, everyone can pre-order the album is actually already available for online in my online store in the website, which is uh, www.solmusic, which is s o l music dot c o dot i l. And uh, yeah, this is before it will get to the store, so you can be one of the first to, to buy it online. Okay, great. Saul, it's a pleasure to have you back on the show. I wish you the best of luck with the album. It is a, a wonderful album. I encourage everyone to check it out, and I look forward to, uh, to speaking to you and to hearing you sing again soon. <laughs> great. Thank you so much, Doug. Thanks. You've been listening to the Goldstein on Gelt Show with money maven Doug Goldstein. Doug's weekly radio show is heard around the world, but if you miss it, you can download the podcast at www.goldsteinongelt.com. The Goldstein on Gelt Show gives you up-to-date financial ideas so you can get on the path to financial freedom. If you'd like your questions answered on the air or off, send Doug an email to doug at profile-financial.com. It's your money for your future, so join Doug every week to build your wealth on the Goldstein on Gelt Show.